Hi guys, how's everybody doing? I'm Brooke Brown from Teach Outside the Box, giving you an up close and personal look at my brand new STEM bins that I am so excited to implement in my classroom. I am a gifted and talented teacher for kindergarten, first and second grade. So not only am I going to be using these in my classroom, but this is going to be an enrichment option that I am providing for regular education teachers. I am constantly being asked what to do when students are finished with work, um, particularly more advanced students, and giving them more hands-on engaging options for when they are finished with their work. All too often we ask them to read a book or we ask them to write in their journal, um, maybe even give them another worksheet, which may work for you as a teacher, but I was starting to think about ways to give our students more meaningful work, not just giving them more work, but giving them more meaningful work. So I have my STEM bin set up in my classroom. I'm gonna give you an up close look. We're gonna look inside each bins and you can see the different options that I provided for writing and literacy extensions as well. So I'm excited to share those with you. Okay. So this is my STEM bin set up in my classroom. These are just plastic school boxes that I got from Walmart. They were 97 cents a piece. And on the cover of each box, it shows exactly what's going to be in. These are going to be appropriate for pre-K, kindergarten, first and second grade. I forgot to mention that. These are for early childhood students. And these are for your early finishers. They are for morning work. They are for indoor recess. They are for behavior incentives. If you have those kiddos that you need to get regular classwork done and they need an incentive, STEM bins are the perfect incentive to motivate them to do their regular classwork. So inside each box, there are materials that most early childhood teachers already have in their own classroom. If they do not have them, they're very inexpensive. You can buy them at the dollar store or at Walmart. They have the covers on the front and inside is just one material for the students to build with. I wanted this to be as simple as possible for you to implement in your classroom. So that one material they are going to build as many different structures as they possibly can. So this one is popsicle sticks with Velcro. They can attach them in different ways. This is just simply Dixie cups, Legos, and these are actually the Legos from Target. You can get these in the dollar spot and also in the Target party section. These are like just imitation Legos. They're awesome. Unifix cubes or linking cubes. I know most early childhood teachers have these in their classrooms. Play-Doh and toothpicks. You would be amazed what students can create with these. And we'll go down to the next level so you can see. Index cards and tape so students can build structures that way. Let's see. Pipe cleaners. Hopefully you have some of these already in your classroom. Pattern blocks. We know I have, I have three or four boxes of pattern blocks in my classroom. We use those all the time. And guys, your early childhood students are begging to build with these anyway. This is the perfect outlet for them. Dominoes and base 10 blocks. I also have editable cards for you to add your own photos and materials on the front. But here is where the STEM and the engineering piece comes in. So they have task cards. I have 18 different task cards for very basic structures that they can build. So you're going to put those task cards inside one of the boxes and they're going to try to build as many different structures as they can using that one material. So in this one, for example, this one is a box. They can build a toy, a tunnel, a bridge, a train, or a bike. So again, depending on what material they are building with, they are going to be more challenging. Some materials will lend themselves better to different structures, but that way they are challenging themselves to think outside the box and think creatively and artistically when it comes to different structures. So you can keep these task cards right inside the box with whatever you're building, or you can just hang them on the wall like this behind and the students can grab a ring. I have six different cards on each one, so you don't need to put all the cards in all the boxes. This is going to give them lots of different options. So you might be asking how you can make this a little bit more difficult. Let's say you teach third grade or second grade and you want this to be a little bit more challenging. I have some challenge yourself cards. So after they finish building whatever structures you that, that they have um, gone through in their task cards, they can improve their structure, which is a really important part of the engineering design process. They're gonna improve, make it taller or wider. They could hold weight and um, they can put books on top, try to make it like, for example, bridges and things like that. Try to make it hold pennies and that can they use all the pieces. That's gonna make it a little bit more challenging for your second or possibly third graders. And you also want to give them that literacy connection if you um, feel that they're ready for that in your classroom. So I have some writing prompts. So they can write about the colors, shapes, and sizes. They can write a descriptive paragraph. This is going to be more for your first and second graders. Um, they can write how-to paragraphs using first, next, then, and last. Or they could make up a story, like an imaginative story, using their structure. I have different templates depending on which grade level you teach. So this one will be more for your kinders. Build, draw, and write. 
And then we have the lines for your first graders and then the littler lines for your second and third graders. You can copy these guys or you can just put them in page protectors like this and have them use dry erase markers to write and wipe. This template's gonna be more appropriate for your uh, pre-Ks and younger. They can just draw the different structures that they create, okay? If you have any questions about stem bins, I would love to chat. If you are already implementing these in your classroom or you have a setup, please send me pictures. I would love to share them out on Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna drop a blog post in the comments as well as a link to the product so you can read all about how I'm implementing them in my classroom, but I'd love to hear your feedback as well. Hope you guys are having a great back to school and we'll chat soon.